Okay, this is English 101, week 13, part 8. Um, I'm actually going to tell a similar story to the one that the woman in the article shared. Um, that's a, it's the one Roderick shared. Um, it, it, it's something that happened to me on Facebook that really, it really reminded me of something. So, uh, you, you haven't, most of you haven't met me. You don't know what I, you know what I look like. Um, but I don't know if you can tell from these videos, I'm very short. Uh, I'm about five foot three. Um, and, uh, it, that's very short. Um, uh, the, one of the things that I, you've seen my clothes sometimes show up on camera. Like last week I wore that really nice jacket. Um, but the, the, one of the things I do when I go shopping, um, is I don't, I don't like a lot of menswear. Um, partly because I think a lot of it is really boring. Um, and the menswear that's interesting is often like sort of fake military where it almost looks like a military outfit. They put like little things on the epaulets, I think they're called. Um, and I don't, I don't quite want to look like I have any connection to the military. I'm not, a, I'm not a violent guy. I don't want to like suggest any link to violence or military uniforms and things. Plus my students are actually in the military. So it seems ridiculous that I would wear like fake military shit when they're like actually in the military. It seems kind of disrespectful to my students who actually actually were in the military. Um, also, a lot of menswear involves, like, skulls and guns and shit. I don't, I'm not that guy. Um, and because I'm so small, uh, one of the things I like to do is I, 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 I always want, I dress pretty simple. I, I wear a t-shirt and jeans pretty much everywhere I go every day. Um, but what I do to dress better and to look a little, a little better, um, and to have a little bit of fun with my outfits is I do wear like a plain, like a black, white, or gray t-shirt with blue jeans or black jeans. Um, but then I buy fancy shoes, fancy belts, uh, fancy glasses, and fancy jackets. And the jackets I get are all from women's clothing stores. Um, women's clothes are just more fun. They have more colors in them, and, they're, and, and they're, they have more patterns on them, and, I, they look, and they look great, and they fit, because I'm only five foot three. Um, so every time I go into a men's store, I always have to get them tailored and fixed. And with jackets, that's tricky, because they often have buttons on the cuffs, and you can't just, you're going to lose all the buttons, and it doesn't look the same. But you go to a women's store, and I can find a jacket, like the jacket that I had on last week, that, that with the with a nice pattern on it, um, I picked up at a clothing store, um, and it it fits perfectly right out. As soon as I put it on, I didn't have to have it fixed or tailored or anything. Um, and so I buy all, I have a I have several jackets that are from women's clothing stores. Um, one to, one of the jackets that I have, but I, I don't know if you've seen, but it's like a it's like a tweed jacket that's gray, but it has like silver in it. Um, and it has sparkles, um, and it has little gems and things on the cuffs, and it's really pretty, and I really like it, it's one of my very favorite jackets. Um, but I was watching a TV show called Ted Lasso, and on the TV show, there's a woman, there's a character named Keely, um, and I was watching the show, and I was like, oh, and I bought it at, like, a fancy women's clothing store in Soho, um, because I was shopping in Lower Manhattan, and I paid way too much money for this jacket, because it was, like, a fancy fashion jacket, and I don't have kids, so I'm gonna spend my money on cool jackets, whatever. So, I'm watching Ted Lasso, and Keely shows up on Ted Lasso at one point, and she's wearing my jacket. I mean, it is, ex it is exact. There's no, it's such a weird jacket, because it has, like, it's, like, old-fashioned tweed, but with silver in it, and has gems on the cuffs, and I was like, oh, shit, that is exact, that, she is wearing the exact fucking jacket that I own. And I thought it was funny, so I took a picture on Facebook, and I put it on Facebook, and I was like, who wore it better? Because that's something fashion magazines will have two actresses wearing the same dress, and then they'll be like, who wore it better? Because they love to turn everything into a competition between women. I just put it in there because it's a fame. Because you can't just have two women. They can't both look good. You have to pick which one. Was you always make women compete with each other. I don't know why they do that. I do know why they do that. It's to control them. We'll talk about that in a second. Because um, when people are fighting each other, they don't get together and fight you. Um, the... Uh, Anyway, I, I, I put, as a joke on Facebook, I, I, all I wanted to do was point out that the jacket I own was the exact same one on the TV show. I was like, oh, that's cool. I like this jacket. That's, I thought this was a good jacket before, and apparently all the, the costume designer for Ted Lasso also thought it was a cool jacket. And I was joking, and I was like, who wore it better? And a bunch of motherfuckers who had never commented on my Facebook page before, men, uh, jumped on and were like, she looks better in it. She looks better in it. I was like, I wasn't, first of all, I wasn't really asking. Uh, I was not asking. Um, I, it was a joke. Like the who wore it better is just what is, is what fashion magazines put above two women who wore the same dress to the Oscars. But I wasn't really asking anyone to say who wore it better. Also, I wore it fucking better. I look great in that jacket. But all the but uh, but several men who like the Becky in the story by Roderick or in the in the article by Roderick, 
um, like Becky, they'd never commented on my Facebook page. They hadn't commented in years. One of them was a fucking BMCC professor. What the fuck? Frank Croco. Oh, there I said his name. Uh, he's not here anymore. Um, and I w and they got on to like, they were like, she wore it better. She looks better in it. She looks better. And I was like, why did y'all get on here? Did you haven't, you haven't spoken to me in years, but you want to come on here to tell me this woman looks better in the jacket than I do. And she, she does I look fucking great in that jacket. Um, the point is, it's a very similar thing, is, um, is that I was enjoying something and people came on to ruin my joy. But the specific reason why, but I, I enjoy things all the time on Facebook and nobody tries to ruin my joy, except this time I was a man wearing a woman's jacket that is outside the norm. And so people showed up to make me feel bad. Um, it's... It's not the same thing, but it has some similarities with the story Roderick tells, where um, black people enjoying other black people, white people don't think is the norm. It's not. It's not the norm. It's supposed to watch movies about slavery and the torture of black people or whatever. Um, and P and this Becky gets on to like mess with her. Um, so, but it's the same thing. Um, and the what what the reason I bring it up is because in both cases, there's an idea of like the norm which is black people are in the minority and they suffer and they're miserable and they, they come from slaves. And that's like sort of the, the, the normal status quo that white people imagine. And in the same way, people have a normal status quo, which is men wear men's clothing and women wear women's clothing. If you violate the norms, people will show up to police you and to tell you um, what you are doing wrong. Um, so I guess what's interesting, uh, I, I think one, of the, one thing to think about with the, the black joy is it's not just, a, it, it is, is you don't have to write about black joy necessarily, but you can write about a kind of joy that goes against the norm. And, and when the norm is bad, is joy a resistance to that norm? I really enjoy my women's jackets and my women's belts and my shoes and all my cute outfit things. I look great. Um, but they're against the norm and I enjoy them. And some people, it drives them fucking crazy uh, that like, I enjoy cute outfits and going shopping in Soho for women's clothing. Um, I don't wear dresses or anything, but I just wear like flashy, crazy jackets. Um, but see, but still, they, people wear dresses, they get fucking murdered sometimes. All I did was buy a jacket from a women's clothing store, but people will show up to mess with your joy when it's outside the norm. Um, and this brings me to the talking points. Um, the talking points are a list of key terms that the people who wrote the exam think you should know. Um, they're pretty simple. We don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Um, basically, the talking points are phrases and ideas that you probably saw in the articles, but you also might see in the questions they ask. Um, so the first one is status quo and norms. Uh, and I just I talked, status quo is whatever's normal. Norms are what's normal, what's every day, what's what, what you expect. Um, and black joy goes against the norm because the norm in movies is to show black pain and black joy is not the norm. It's not the status quo. Um, men wearing men's clothes and women wearing women's clothes is the norm. And apparently me having a hot pink jacket and looking fucking fantastic in it is uh, against the norm. And people want to force you to follow the norm. Um, civil society is, you know, like the society that we live in where people have to deal with each other and behave nicely. Uh, autonomy is doing things in and for yourself. You know that from the from. Reframing an experience is like a way of rethinking it. So like this woman on Facebook gets mad uh, about black joy and the, the author reframes it. So it's not just about this one lady, but it's about like American culture as a whole. That's reframing her shitty Facebook experience into a bigger thing. Um, virtue, that's doing the right thing, being good. You understand that. Society, culture, I think you guys understand that. Uh, freedom, joy, disobedience, and resistance. The talking points are very simple this year. Uh, if you have questions about them, I can help you with them. Um, but I think that's it for the talking points. We've been through both essays, so I just have a, a little bit more to say, and then we will wrap up the goddamn semester. Good job, everybody.